Hello YouTube, this is a review of a video uh, by Denise Chavez Goforth uh, about uh, Saturn being tilted on its side. And back on 19th of December she uploaded a video uh, claiming to have confirmed that Saturn and in fact Jupiter had tilted on their sides. Um, so this is a review of her video, we're going to look at some images and, and see if we can uh, work out what's been going on. I've been away on holiday for three weeks and I've been away from my computer and I've had very limited internet access and I've, I've been away from the, the tools I normally use to make these videos so I've had to wait until I, I come back to, uh, to make this video so here we go. Let's take a closer look at uh, Denise's video and her claims and uh, see where we go from there. Good morning, this is Denise Chavez Goforth and today is December 19th, 2012 at 10.22 a.m. As you all know, we have all been waiting for confirmation from the observ observatories with regard to the, mm, the planets in our solar system and whether or not they have shifted. Well, um, you all already know what happened with um, Jupiter. It's completely on its side and now I have some images from the Bradford Robotic Telescope that just came into my account just now with regard to Saturn. Uh, let's get right o on over to those images right away. There it is. It's on its side. Saturn is on its side, completely on its side, just like Jupiter. Um, Here's my request, Saturn, and it says flat field image number eight. Eight has been used to enhance and correct the image. There it is. And then, uh, okay, so we'll, we'll stop there and uh, have a look and see if we can figure out what's going on. You heard Denise uh, announce that um, that Saturn is is completely on its side there. It's on its side. Okay, so let's have a look and see if we can figure this out. Here is the image that Denise has uh, presented um, showing um, Saturn supposedly on its side. She's looking at this and uh, thinking that uh, this is the, um, the side on, on view. It's sort of right on its, on its edge, um, side on there. It should be this way and it's actually this way. Is this what's really going on though? Let's have a look. Now, let's have a look at some um, images, some screenshots. This is a screenshot of uh, the image that we were just looking at and I've actually just shown in here the the limits of the of the picture. You can actually see it when you're looking at the the picture on YouTube um, and what I'm going to do now is go into Starry Night Pro. I'm going to come back to this picture in a minute. This is a fairly complex explanation, so bear with me. Here is Saturn on the 19th of uh, December 2012 at the exact time that the image was taken that she has shown on her video. That's 6.42.57. That's UTC time. Now I've set the location of uh, Starry Night to the same location, Tenerife. Um, using the, the map selector in, in Starry Night. The other thing that I've done here is I've done a horizontal flip of the image because when you're looking through a telescope the image is often um, laterally inverted. In other words it's flipped from one side to the other. And this is because of the effect of the mirrors in the telescope. So I've actually that's the normal view and that's the flipped view. Okay, what I'm going to do now is um, you can see Saturn clearly there. I explained in an earlier video that uh, the planets can appear to tilt, including the Moon, Saturn, Jupiter. Uh, they can appear to tilt depending on your viewing location, whether you're in the northern hem hemisphere or the southern hemisphere, also your latitude, and also the position of the planet in the sky. If it is rising in the east it's going to be orientated one way if you're looking at it when it's in the midpoint in the sky it's going to be orientated 
differently and as it's uh, setting in the west it's going to be orientated completely differently to what it was when it was rising in the east so there are those factors there are also the the factors of the orientation of the camera on the telescope there is also the mounting of the telescope so all of these things affect the way that the the image will appear okay um, but anyway let's get back to these images here is Saturn you can see one of the moons rear here um, and we can see some of the other moons here but I've, I've only got certain ones labeled and you'll see why shortly now I'm going to zoom out we're going to get more of the picture here okay what I've got labeled here is the the moon Rhea the moon Titan the moon Iapetus We've also got a star labelled here, you can see the, the number on there, TYC 5571-574-1. We've got another one down here which I've not labelled because I can only label uh, one of the stars at a time in this view. So the other one we can see here is TYC 5571-324-1. Okay? So these are the ones that I want to draw your attention to. This star here. Uh, Rhea, Titan, Iapetus, and the star here, TYC 5571-574-1. Let's go back to some of these pictures. We can see in, in Denise's image that there are what appear to be stars or moons visible. We've got one here, one here, one here, one here, and one here. Okay. Now, these are actually the the moons and the two stars that uh, we were looking at in the um, in in this image here. I'm going to come back to a still image. Um, now I'll just try and bring up the labels on these that I've put in. Here we go. Here's the the star at the top, TYC 5571-574-1. Here is Rhea. Here is Titan. Here is Iapetus. And here is the other star, TYC 5571324-1. Now, these views that we're looking at between this one and the one from Starry Night, which is, uh, where did I put it? This one here. Okay, this is a, a labelled screenshot from Starry Night. You can see that if I jump from this one to this one, they are orientated differently. Okay. So what I've done is I've gone into paint.net which is like Photoshop and here is Denise's image. Um, the only thing I've done to this image is to put this white border around which shows the limit of the, the camera's view. All this black on the outside is not space, it's just um, desktop background if you like. It's not part of the picture. But everything on the inside of the white border is part of her picture. That is her cursor and we can see the the objects here uh, a star, a moon, a moon, a moon and a star I believe we'll, we'll see anyway when I show the um, overlap so I've got two pictures here I'm going to bring in the overlap which I've actually rotated okay now that is the image from Starry Night Pro you can see the top of the Starry Night interface there um, with the date on it, 19th uh, December 19th 2012 and uh, so this is this is a screenshot directly from Starry Night Pro and as you can see I've rotated it so that we can overlay it. So what I'm going to do now is toggle so I'm going to switch this on and off and see if they overlay directly over Denise's picture. Here we go. Now you'll need to be watching this video with your video setting to 720p so that you can see it nice and clearly but I think if you follow each one of the labeled objects you'll see that they correspond to the objects which are um, in Denise's picture so what we're actually seeing here okay note the way that in D Denise's picture she's saying that this is Saturn edge on but on its side so she's looking at this as if they're the rings, okay? But what is actually going on is that Saturn is this way, with the rings this way, and it's actually hidden in a whole lot of um, 
um, bleeding of light, if you like. You often see this in the um, STO or, or SOHO images of uh, the planets when we look at, uh, or rather the stereo images. Um, you often see when there's a planet going through, you see this um, the sort of bleeding of the light vertically. And this is the same thing that's happened in this image. These aren't actually the rings of Saturn. The rings are actually this way. Let me toggle back again. Okay, it's pretty small to see here, but the, the rings are actually this way. Um, let me see if I can zoom in on that. Um, I don't think I can very easily, unless I can do it this way. Yeah, okay. You can see that, that the rings are orientated that way, not vertically, when we have them overlapped. Okay, so I think that's well and truly debunked the claims that Saturn has um, tilted on its side. Uh, Saturn is in the morning sky at the moment and incidentally um, I did go out with the telescope last night and had a look at Jupiter. I checked in starry night first and uh, checked to see the position of the moons and the, the tilt of the, the, cloud, the cloud belts that you can see. They look like stripes across the planet. Then I did go out with the telescope and checked. I eyeballed it. It's one of the criticisms that sometimes is made that when I show screenshots or video from Starry Night Pro, it is, it is a simulation. It's not a real eyeball view of what's going on. But I can tell you that I did go out last night, had a look through the telescope, and um, Jupiter was exactly as it should be. All the moons were in exactly the right place, as shown in Starry Night Pro, and the, the tilt of the planet was exactly as it should be. Um, Saturn is in the morning sky. I'd need to get up about 4 o'clock in the morning, 5 o'clock in the morning to, to have a look. Um, but uh, Jupiter is in the evening sky, so it's uh, a better time to to have a look at it. Um, so yes, I think that's well and truly debunked that. Saturn is not on its side. Um, this is nothing more than sort of a, a overexposed image with some um, bleeding of, of light in it. Um, we've identified all of the, the, the moons and, and stars um, in this object. That's her cursor, of course. Um, so, you know, once again we have somebody announcing to the world that, that something amazing has happened. As you can see from the title, Nibiru Saturn shifted, uh, Zeta Talk is correct. So you've got these armchair experts who are confirming things that haven't actually happened. Uh, I copped some flack from uh, people like uh, Tree of Might, Dark Sky Watcher 74. Um, your video is up next, buddy. I look forward to that one. Thank you for watching. And as usual, check out my Facebook discussion page, uh, Voices of Reason to Explain X. I'll put a link for you in the description area. Thank you for watching.